Jiao Zhenji, Delena Ashley Yun, Paul Andre Michaels, Soon Chung Park, Young Young Grant, Sun Cha Kim, Young Ayu, Zio Ji Tan, Dao Yao Feng. These are just some of the people who have been attacked, severely hurt, or pronounced dead because of recent violence against the Asian community, whether they were of Asian descent, associated with Asians, or were Asians themselves. There have been nearly 3,800 reports of hate incidents targeting Asian Americans nationwide since March of 2020, according to Stop Asian American Pacific Islander Hate, otherwise known as Stop AAPI Hate. And in recent weeks, we've seen a series of high-profile attacks against Asian Americans, ranging from fatal robberies to fatal assaults. So we may be asking ourselves, how many of these attacks were racially motivated? In order for an act of violence to be legally classified as a hate crime, the perpetrator has to explicitly mention or signal that they are committing this crime in the name of hatred for that group. In many of the most recent attacks on Asian Americans, the perpetrators have made no such declaration. Yet in the past year, we've seen a rush in violent crime. In some cases, Asian Americans were probably caught up in a wave of murder and assault without being specifically targeted. That being said, there is quite a lot of evidence suggesting that people of Asian descent are becoming special targets of violence. For example, at the study of hate and extremism at California State University, San Bernardino, they recently released a fact sheet that claims anti-Asian hate crimes spiked by 149% in the America's largest cities during 2020. So where is this animosity coming from? Though hate crimes against Asian Americans have been slowly rising since 2016, some evidence suggests that this past year's surge was driven by racist reactions to the COVID-19 pandemic. Former President Trump repeatedly referred to the COVID-19 as the Chinese virus, which appears to have strengthened the association of Asians and disease in the minds of his followers, which have also been expressed through social media. So in light of these events, as individuals, we must do more. So here are some little things you can do. One, you can support Asian American owned restaurants. While the restaurant industry as a whole has struggled throughout the pandemic, Asian restaurants have been hit particularly hard and have been subject to racist attacks due to these xenophobic fears surrounding the coronavirus. So show your support by visiting or ordering takeout from an Asian American Pacific Islander owned business in your community. You can also donate to different organizations such as Stop Asian American Pacific Islander Hate, which compiles reports of hate crimes against the Asian community throughout the U.S., provides support to victims of these crimes, and produces reports on these incidents that help advocate for social and political protections for the community, as well as many other organizations out there. You can also educate yourself, but most importantly, stay informed. Violence against the AAPI community has been on the rise for over a year, but many outside of the community have only recently begun to hear about it, largely through social media. We cannot let this xenophobia be swept under the rug once again, nor shall we sit back and allow the AAPI community to do all the work themselves. Allies must continue to stay updated on policies and movements to address the attacks and to share that information with our own communities and social media in order to ensure that it stays at the top of the mind for policymakers and other community advocates as well.